In this video, we'll present the transformation for going from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates and show a brief example of how they can be used to calculate the volume of a cylinder. So now working in three dimensions, we need to replace the volume element and Cartesian coordinates that was given by a parallel pipette, so a three-dimensional rectangle, into something that has some curvature. So the way to think about cylindrical coordinates is that they're the three-dimensional generalization of polar coordinates. So in the xy plane, we again have a variable for the distance from the origin to some point x, y, typically denoted by r. And we have a, an angle, again, from uh, starting at 0 from x and going counterclockwise. We, again, call that angle theta. And the third dimension is simply given by the set coordinate in Cartesian coordinates. All right, so we again have the same formulas from our polar coordinate system, but now generalized to 3D by extending the Z axis to our coordinate system. The volume element in cylindrical coordinates. So if you want to find this has volume dv, we can find this by considering a uh, approximating this as a, as a rectangle. So we can find the volume by multiplying the length of each uh, side. This side retains the formula from polar coordinates. Which was R d theta, where d theta is this angle over here. We can consider this small radial element to be of length dr. So that the length of this is just given by dr. So, so far we have r d theta, we have dr. And then finally we, want, we need to multiply by the height, which is given by dz. So this is the volume element in cylindrical coordinates. So when you integrate, what you're doing when you perform a triple integration is you're adding up a bunch of these little curved cubes. As an example, we can set up the integration for finding the volume of a cylinder in Cartesian coordinates of height h. And radius r. This will involve the following three integrals. This is one way of doing it. So you can integrate with respect to z first over the height of the cylinder, so from 0 to h. And then you integrate with respect to y, again taking into account the curvature of the base and upper face. And then once you've integrated y, you need to integrate that 
with respect to x to take into account the entire domain across x. And once again, this integral uh, will require some trigonometric substitution to solve. In contrast, in cylindrical coordinates, this integral can be set up as follows. You have an integration with respect to z, an integration with respect to theta, and an integration with respect to r. We're now I'm using r prime as the variable of integration. And again, because neither one of these variables depend on one another, we can independently evaluate each integral rather than having to choose a particular order which affects our limits of integration. So r goes from zero to the radius of the cylinder. Theta has to encompass the entire circle of the base, so zero to pi, and z remains the same, integrating the entire height of the circle. And this gives us the volume of a cylinder. Again, in a much simpler way than if we had to perform this integration. In the next video, we'll finish off uh, the coordinate systems that we'll be presenting and using in this course by showing the transformations to go into spherical coordinates.